All right, in this video, we're going to talk about strong acids and weak acids. The first thing you want to know is how do you distinguish between strong acids and weak acids? And the main difference is by looking at the amount of dissociation. For strong acids, we say that they completely dissociate in solution, whereas weak acids only partially dissociate in solution. So let's look more at strong acids. We've got our example here of HCl, the typical strong acid. Hydrochloric acid, when added into water, will form hydronium ions and chloride anions. Now, the reason why strong acids are able to dissociate completely in solution is because chloride, the conjugate base, is extremely stable. So what we see here is that the conjugate base of a strong acid has no basic properties. So what we mean by the fact that the conjugate base of a strong acid has no basic properties is that chloride has zero desire to accept a proton to reform HCl. So essentially, any HCl molecules that dissociate to form hydronium ions and chloride will remain dissociated, and that allows for complete dissociation. Now, as a strong acid, if we're looking at the strength, we recall from our previous video that we quantify acid strength with two values, Ka as well as the pKa. Ka is directly proportional to acid strength, so if we're looking at a strong acid, we're looking at a large Ka value. And pKa is inversely related to acid strength, so a strong acid has a small pKa value. Finally, the last thing you need to know is that HCl is not the only strong acid. There are many strong acids out there, and for the MCAT, there are a few important ones you want to have memorized. So here we're going to have the strong acids for the MCAT. So you have hydrochloric acid, hydrobromic acid, hydroiodic acid, sulfuric acid, nitric acid, and perchloric acid. So these six molecules you want to have memorized for the MCAT. All right, so that's strong acids. Let's now take a look at weak acids. Weak acids, as we said, they don't dissociate completely. They only partially dissociate. We've got our example here with acetic acid, common example of weak acid. When it's added to water, it can dissociate to form hydronium ions and acetate ions. However, you can see a difference here is here we have the equilibrium arrows. The equilibrium arrows shows that both the forward and reverse reactions are proceeding, as opposed to the strong acid where there's a forward arrow only showing complete dissociation. So what this means is that as acetic acid dissociates to form hydronium ion and acetate, some of the acetate ions in solution will accept a proton to reform acetic acid. This is the reason why weak acids don't dissociate completely. Some of their dissociated ions will reform their original weak acid. So here, the fact that acetate is able to accept protons means that the acetate is acting as a base. And what you need to know is that the conjugate base of a weak acid is a weak base. Now, here's where you have to be a little careful because there's a lot of confusion out there. A lot of students think, hey, if this is a weak acid, its conjugate base should be strong, but that's incorrect, all right? Remember, anything that is strong dissociates completely in solution. So this is a strong acid, dissociates completely, so its conjugate base has no basic properties. That would mean that if acetate were a strong base, then it would dissociate completely, so acetic acid should have no acidic properties. However, that is incorrect. So what's helpful to keep in mind is that the conjugate of a weak is another weak. So our weak acid here, its conjugate base is a weak base. 
Now, it might be a little confusing though, because if you think about it, if this is a weak acid and this is a weak base, what is the molecule? Is it an acid or is it a base? So here, there's actually a rule that you can use for classifying molecules as acids or bases. And you're essentially comparing the Ka of the acid and the Ka, uh, sorry, Kb of the conjugate base. So specifically in this example, we know that the Ka of acetic acid, CH3COOH, this is about equal to 10 to the minus five. The Kb, how strong the acetate is as a conjugate base, is then approximately equal to 10 to the negative nine. Remember, the product of Ka and Kb has to equal 10 to the negative 14. So that's how we get these values here. Now, what you can notice here is that Ka of the acid is stronger than Kb of the conjugate base. So this tells us the molecule is an acid. And that should also make sense because acetic acid has acid in its name. But this is a helpful way to clarify whether molecules are acids or bases. If it's Ka is greater than Kb, it's an acid. If the Kb is greater than a Ka, then the molecule is a base. All right. Now the other thing you can probably recognize from this example right here is that if you're looking at a weak acid, then its Ka is going to be small. Right, this is a very small value. However, the Kb is even smaller. We can also look at the pKa, which here is gonna have a large value because they're inversely related. And finally, in terms of weak acids on the MCAT, unfortunately, it's a little bit more complicated than strong acids. Strong acids, we've got a small list for you to have memorized. Weak acids, we can't give you a list because there are way too many possible weak acid molecules that can show up on the exam. So the way that you actually operate for the MCAT is on the MCAT, any acid that is not a strong acid is a weak acid. All right, again, on the MCAT, if you see an acid, it's donating protons. If it's not one of our six strong acids, you're expected to assume that that is a weak acid. Okay, so that's how strong acids and weak acids work. In the next video, we're going to look at strong bases and weak bases, and we're going to see there are a lot of similarities between the two.